Hey guys, how's it going? So we're gonna plant a few new things on the new property today. It's actually kind of a hazy day. Um, there's some smoke in the air. It's creating a little bit of a kind of overcast effect, um, which does make it easier on our plants uh, in terms of when it's gonna be hot. It kind of provides a little bit of extra protection. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna plant hopefully the three Shawnee Brave Bald Cypress that we picked up at Far West Nursery over in Boise. When Aaron and I, I think that was the day we went over to pick out the brick for the Hartley Greenhouse. Uh, so we've had those sitting out by the high tunnel and just been watering them every day. So I think they'd be much happier to be in the ground. I've got a few day lilies and then I wanted to show you our progress on the grass. Things are looking pretty good, you guys. Pretty good. Aaron has come in, uh, reseeded a few patchy areas. We still have a whole bunch of weeds in the far side there, but we've really got a lot of the big stuff. There's still quite a few little things, but those are gonna be easy. What we were mostly concerned about, which I just showed you in a video recently, but it's this puncture vine which this is actually not part of the lawn. See where the white flags are? That's actually gonna be, this side is flower bed, that side will be lawn. So I need to come along actually and clean this whole thing up. That'll be a project. So it'll go right along here and then it kind of swoops out and then goes up around the ash tree and then to the house. Um, so we do need to clean that up. But the puncture vines are like, these are fairly small-ish. So if I follow one of these stems back, like this is a relatively small one right here. I mean, they can get like two or three square feet for one weed. I mean, they could fill up this entire area. And it can be a little bit hard, especially when they're thicker, to find the center and get them pulled. Hopefully I get the root on this one. Yes, <laughs> good sound. Um, but I was starting to think like, because my hands are feeling so wrecked from, you know, all these puncture vines, look at that. That's what we don't want to have drop all over the grass because that's a new crop of puncture vines. I remember last night as I was laying in bed that Hoselink recently sent us out a weeding tool where you can weed standing up and you can easily, it's got these little forks I'm going to show you. I've showed you in a previous video, but we just, Aaron and I just brought it out here and tried it out and it kind of made me feel like I just spent so many hours hand weeding like on my hands and knees when I could have just used this <laughs> standing tool. Ah, uh, it's got four forks that you can easily find the center of the puncture vine, put the forks around it and just pop it right out. Anyway, let me show you. Aaron just came out here because he's going to be helping with the planting, but do you want to demonstrate that tool? No, but you can. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll hold the camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let me show you guys another example. This is one I just tried on. So this is a puncture vine right here. A lot of us refer to them as goat heads. Look at this. Isn't that awful? And I guess each one of these points is a new seed. So not as only is this not just one seed, it's several, and they're all over this plant. And they come up from like this one root and then they create this big massive carpet. So I tried on a few and it works out really well. So see this one right here? You can see the center is right there. So it's got these four forks. You find the center, step down, and then pop it out. And then you can do this. Into a bag. Into a bag. Like, what was I doing out here? <laughs> I can't believe that I hand weeded in my hands. Like last night, I felt like I needed to take some painkiller just to like take the edge off my hands, just going through this and getting so many punctures and such. But here's a purslane. See this one? Boom, button weed. See that? Now, I'm not thinking that this is as efficient, like if you got a ton of little weeds all in one area. What I think that this is best for are the huge puncture vines. I also don't think that it would be really that effective on really big weeds either. Like tall. Like, like if you've um, got a three foot tall weed. Oh, sure. Like this one probably would work just fine. We got lots of examples right now <laughs> to try this out on. Okay. So I think the center is here. It's also really dry right here. Oh, look at that. I just do these real quick. <laughs> oh, you know, I noticed this last time when I was showing on dry and gravelly areas, sometimes it doesn't grab them. Okay, let's try another one. Oh, I don't think I had the center on that, did I? Mm -mm. 
Didn't work on that one. Did I have the center ever? Maybe not. Okay, so it works on most of everything. <laughs> I think you'll find that there, there will be some things that it doesn't work on. And it could just be soil consistency. Um, it seems like it works well when the soil is damp. Yeah, but isn't this crazy how white our soil looks? And then you just get underneath it and it's actually got moisture in there. So yeah, especially for those of you guys who have back or knee problems, I mean, you don't have to pop them out onto the ground. You can just pop them right into your bag. So if you've got your bag with you, you just pop it into your bag instead of having to go back through and pick them up like I'm gonna have to do. I wasn't really planning on this today though. I just kind of remembered it late last night. Gosh, that's so much better than what I was doing. Might be a little bit of an issue if you can't see the center very well. I think that's the center. Yes. This one will be satisfying. Try it on the weed behind the fence. <laughs> okay. Let me find the center here. That's the problem. I think we're close here. I don't know, Aaron. It's like a trunk. See that? Nope. I think those are too big. Okay, let's move on. Let's get to the planting. I'm just thrilled that this is gonna work. I kinda wanna go try it like in the grass though. Just like a little bit in the grass. So we're in the part of the lawn really quick before we move on to planting that uh, ended up a pond the other day after we had all of that rain. So Aaron just reseeded it last night. So it hasn't started to germinate. That's why I'm standing out here. Anyway, there are some huge weeds right out here that I wanted to try. You should time me, Aaron. Okay. I'll do like this section right here. Where am I at? I don't know, but you gotta clean it up. Oh. Should have had a bag. Go, go, go. Hey, <laughs> shh. You these can have, keep as many weeds as you can carry. These have stickers. Are Thanks. you proud of yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm sweating. <laughs> Okay, so now that we figured out an easier way to weed out there, which I'm so happy about, I'm standing next to the high tunnels by the bald cypress. So these three right here, they've got this beautiful kind of ferny, they're a deciduous conifer. They've got a very soft fern texture and they turn kind of a rust orange in the fall and drop their leaves, but the trunk, like the bark is very interesting. They grow about 50, 55 feet tall, 15 to 20 feet wide, and they are a zone five. Uh, and I think they will be very happy to be put in the ground, not sitting here in their cans. I've actually been watering these twice a day to keep them happy through our heat. And here's our daylilies right here that need a major cleanup job. I need to groom these. One of my favorites, they're called orange smoothie. I have some of these planted uh, near some stand by me clematis. So the purple stand by me with these orange daylilies. I have a fly on my arm. Ah. Anyway, so pretty, two feet tall. They bloom a few times through the summer and they've just got that really beautiful like mango peach color. Let's see, space them tw two feet, zone three through nine. And I've got 10 of them here. I thought we would do a nice drift somewhere out here uh, because these really, like you can come in and pull their stalks when they're done blooming, which is really easy. And then just let them rebloom and cut them back once a year, or you don't have to deadhead them necessarily. They don't typically get dry leaves like this when they're planted in the landscape. Should be pretty low maintenance. Do you need a scissor? <laughs> No. Are you sure? <laughs> having a hard time cutting these. Here. So I'm just taking it apart. Oh, you got just, that one though. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need me. You don't need me and my, my cutting skills. I kind of want to see you cut another one though. Okay. Let's see it. First try. Oops. Well, two tries. <laughs> Three tries. <laughs> well done. I need to sharpen these. That's what's going on here. 
All right, I'm just cutting all the tags off quick while they're easy. Once you get them planted, they'll just be way too hard to get them off. I don't need any sassafras from you, Aaron. <laughs> Does anybody else get sassed while you're out gardening? I get lots of sass from this one. Boy, that's gonna look nice. Instant impact right there, don't you think? Those are some big holes, Aaron. We had very lofty plans. We thought we would do all of this and then maybe something else, but I don't know after we get done with all these holes if yeah, you really feel like this. it. So I think we've decided to place our first one right in here. We're kind of on, what, what side of the house? This is the north west side. West, northwest side. Yeah. Uh, it might even provide a little bit of wind support for this blue spruce um, in the end because, I mean, it gets really tall. It'll be the tallest thing over here. We have a Corinthian linden, the spruce, and then a forest pansy redbud right there, which are supposed to have way more purple colored leaves. I'm kind of sad about their leaf color right now. I'm gonna see what they do next year. You know, you never really can judge something off of its first year in the ground. So we'll see. But yeah, I think that'll look really, really nice right there. First one is done. I love it. I think the texture over here is so, so nice. And you can see that I already ran the drip. I did a double loop because these like a little bit more water. We have it all watered in too. We put water in around the root ball as well as the starter fertilizer and the compost and then planted it, watered it in again. And then I just propped the drip tube up here in the tree until we have a chance to tap it in. We're gonna have to, to run a three quarter inch line though, probably over this way. Now I didn't bring out those supplies. So anyway, I've got this all ready to go, but I don't want any dirt to get in it. So here it will stay <laughs> until, we, until we get the irrigation set up. So, all right. Next one? Next one. Okay. Okay, so now we're standing out on the opposite corner. We just planted the other one way over there. Now this is the southwest corner. And we've got in this area, blue sky Serbian spruce, another Corinthian linden. This is where the uh, totem pole grasses are. This is the start of the autumn blaze maple line along the lane here. But then there's this open spot right here in the entry. What do you think, Aaron, about doing like some kind of highly decorative, like maybe a water feature of some kind? Yeah. Wouldn't that be get, pretty? Get Greg out here. Oh, I'm sure he would like to do something right here. Yeah. That'd be kind of pretty uh, to do something and do like some really architectural evergreens. But either way, I think it would be nice to have that really tall structure of the cypress right in here. And then on this side, limelight prime, hydrangea hedge, black lace elderberry, red fox katsura, and so on and so forth. Hopefully the digging's easier on this side. Do you want, well, should I just stick it out there and you sure. can decide what you want? Yeah, look at how menagerie our cart ends up being. So nice to have this gator I though. know, it really I is. I can't imagine life without it now. I would probably be in better shape if we didn't have it. <laughs> well, you know, we went from the lawn tractor with the trailer, right. remember? So we did have a, a well, good sized trailer. we started with the carts. It was carts and then lawn tractor right. and then the gator. I love the bark, isn't it pretty? Yeah. Remember, this is the one, the tree that I like more than you. Well, I like it. I think you should move it back a bit, Aaron, toward me. Okay. Could have told me that as I was making the trek all the way out here. <laughs> you were moving so fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what, Aaron? It needs to move toward you, like okay. two feet. I just heard a branch snap. No, no, it was something else. <laughs> something else. Oh, it was. Oh. That's okay. It was a... A no low-hanging branch. We don't want those. That looks yeah. really good right there. Doesn't that look awesome? So if we still did something decorative right here and then did three evergreens or whatever, you know, behind it, and then that could be like the towering gorgeousness. We should do like a big rock, like water feature right here or something. It'd be pretty. I mean, but it'd be a shame that we wouldn't have it closer to the house. Yeah, but you'd see it every time you drive in. You would in. see it a lot. Okay, let's do this. That looks so good right there. And here comes Benjamin. I see him on his lawn tractor over there. 
he came out and helped to shovel a little dirt and decided to go get his lawn tractor. It's starting to look like a thing out here. Like a garden, Aaron. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and weeds. There are, there are those. But, but you know what? The more things that we plant, the less weeds there will be. That's very true. And oh, see where all the pink flags are? So the loop, it comes out of the cut flower garden where the picket ends and it loops around like this. All the irrigation is in place and Aaron has the grass seed. So we will have a 15 foot grass loop pathway around this area. It's gonna be gorgeous. It's gonna be really nice. Yeah! How do you like that tree, bud? Good. It's a good, huh? I love it. <laughs> We got the tree in the ground. Aaron went to go grab the hose reel, which is right over there, so that we can get some water in the hole before we backfill with the soil. So while he's doing that, I think I'm gonna go get these daylilies placed. I did clean up a few of them. There are some dry tips and stuff, but they look a lot better than how they started. I'm thinking it would be nice to have a drift of daylilies right in here. So right after the Limelight Prime in front of this is a Deruder's uh, Serbian Spruce, and then we've got an Autumn Brilliance Service Berry right here. I think that look really nice. So here are the orange smoothie daylilies. I really like them over here quite a bit. You can see the bald cypress we put in. Just really pretty additions today to this space. And the orange smoothies, I have them, like I said, in another area of our yard and they perform really well for us. That one actually has a bloom stalk on it so we'll get to see some color. We may even be able to see another color show from these this season even though they're newly planted. You can never really you know, know what to expect from a plant especially when you plant it out when it's over 100 degrees in the middle of the summer. Um, but I think that these are their tough plants. They should take right off. I am considering popping like two more here and then one more here. So the drift kind of starts in between these two plants and then it gets thicker and skinnier like that. I kind of like doing irregular drifts like that. Tends to look a little bit more natural in the end. Um, and then these limelight primes will fill in this area. I think they get, oh gosh, I can't remember, four to five feet wide. It's possible I'm gonna need to move this daylily in a little bit. I kind of forgot about that. So when I add these in, I'll probably shift this one down just a little bit so that the um, hydrangeas have plenty of room. And then I may have room to do a little bit of something, just something more uh, narrow, right here, right at the edge before the grass starts. All right, let's go and see the bald cypress that Aaron was working on. He got it all done. All right, so there it is. We actually replaced the Venus dogwood that was in that spot. Remember, we planted that out. We I dug it from around the fireplace and it had hardly any roots on it and it just didn't thrive. It had a few leaves on it that were all curled and kind of crisping up. And so we decided that it would be a good place to put the cypress. I think that looks really nice. And just so you guys can kind of see what the future plan is, you can see the flag there and there. So this is the start of the grass pathway. It will go right up to the edge of the flower garden and it'll stop here as well because I'm gonna put in a flower bed along the picket fence there. And then the gravel here will kind of come out and go around the front of the high tunnels, even though that's not where we permanently plan to keep those, I'm not sure. But then this is all planting area as well. So we'll keep a mulch pathway just in front of the flower bed here. So the grass will start here and it's gonna go alongside the garden. And then where the other opening is, that's where the other side of this loop starts for the grass pathway. And the grass will continue on all the way around the exterior of the cut flower garden, but the interior runs. So if I drive forward, so like right here, we had to move these so that the guys could put the sprinklers up and I actually love them right here. I think that looks so awesome. And everything's just taken off and looking great in the cut flower garden. But right here, this will all remain mulch for now because I wanna do a meadow in here 
and the shed is going here. Look at everything in here. It's just looking so good. These are all sunflowers right here. You can see the celosia and the artichokes and the uh, beautiful amaranth. Isn't the emerald tassels beautiful? That drapey one. Oh, I love it. In here, I've got some California poppies. The sunflowers are kind of, and feverfew. Sunflowers are blocking them a bit. And then on this side, you can see the dahlia patch is really coming into its own right now. Anyway, this is all going to remain mulch up to the front. So the grass will go down the sides, down the front, and then down this side. So it looks like the grass pathways that are coming, you know, from over by the house and then also from this loop will look like they connect to this area somehow. But I think for now, it'll be nice to have mulch in the center. Fountain here, benches in the corners. All our stuff that we planted the other day is looking good. Look at this. Kale is up. We've got zinnias up and cress is up. Just crazy, crazy growth. There's the beets that we planted all up. Look at this, so pretty. And that's where they are working this next week. You can see the trench there for the sprinklers and the cypress from this side. It's so beautiful. I'm thinking an, an evergreen, smaller type evergreen here, and then one back in here as well. Then we have the three spring groves in the center there that we planted earlier on this year. It makes me wonder what kind of fall color we're gonna get to enjoy out here. You know, like I just said, you can never know what to expect or you never know what to expect out of a first year planting because oftentimes they don't do what they're typically supposed to do in the first year because they might be shocked a little bit or they're just adjusting to their spot. So it's usually a better judge to leave them in the ground for a full growing season. So next fall to see what they're gonna look like, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see the maples along the lane to see if those color up really nicely and then everything around here, including the cypress that we planted today that are supposed to be that russet color. Um, I think it's gonna be a really fun show. So maybe this fall we'll have a moment where we can kind of walk around and maybe go plant by plant before it gets too thick and really look them over and see how they've done this season. I mean, it's been a really, um, it's been a test for a lot of these plants, a test for us, all of the heat that we've had this year and all of the wind. Um, and so I'm really thrilled, like if these plants during their first growing season can live through the adverse conditions that we have had, then I have very high hopes for them in the future. Um, so it's all kind of starting to shape up now. We're hoping to have um, both of these big corners that we're planting in mulched by this fall. So we'll have grass going, mulched areas, so it'll look a little bit tidier, keep the dust down. Um, that's the goal anyway, I don't know if we'll get there, but. It's all fun. We'll keep you guys in the loop. Everything that goes on, we're trying to film everything. I hope you guys don't get sick of planting videos. I told Aaron that this morning. I'm like, I feel like I just go out and plant a couple things and film it and hopefully people don't get bored um, watching all the plants that go in here. But how fun will it be though once it's full and we can all like look back and remember um, like when I planted the daylilies kind of out in a sea of nothing and you know planted the grasses here and there and you know all that anyway. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I'm super happy with the results of all the plants and we will see you in the next one. Bye.